guys, it's Nikki from Love of Dirt and welcome back to another video. I thought today we'd do a bit of a tour of what our garden looks like in June. So it's actually winter for us here in southeast Queensland in Australia. Um, and we live in the subtropics so it is actually better for us to grow over the cooler months. Um, it's a lot easier to grow a lot of the traditional vegetables, annual vegetables that um, you love and eat. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to give you a bit of a tour, show you what's growing, um, what, what we're harvesting and yeah, let's get into it. Okay, this is the bed that we planted out in uh, March. So we do sort of um, a four month rotation for our quick turnaround crops, things that um, grow within around 90 to 120 days and that just keeps, it's a really easy way to keep up with succession. So in here we've got um, some cauliflower which is just starting to head up. Um, we've got kale, which we did a big harvest on that yesterday because my son wanted to make kale chips and he ate it all. So he ate a lot of kale yesterday. Um, we've got lettuce. Um, we've already harvested a few heads out of here, but now I'm just picking the outer leaves. We've got some tatsoi growing um, and broccoli. This is the green magic. It's the only um, hybrid that we grow just because we do love our broccoli here. Um, and we find that... Some of the heirloom varieties just don't get big enough fast enough for us to actually grow them over our cool season so this one's called green magic you can grab that from my shop um, we've got some flowers in here so some corn flowers some more lettuce um, here's just a little tip with the broccoli as well um, so this one's one that we harvested um, maybe two weeks ago or so um, so we just leave them in until until they re-sprout and then we get lots of little broccolini so it's a good way to extend the harvest you can also really eat the leaves so just be mindful of that a lot of people sort of don't want to grow um, broccoli because it takes up so much space um, but there's so much of the plant that you can eat um, so we've got another little one that's got a head for me and up the back here we've got the sugar snap seeds so sugar snap peas I should say seeds um, so these ones are cascadia so these are the ones that we grow because we do have a problem with um, powdery mildew and this one seems to be the most resistant to that um, so yeah my my son was picking these when they were tiny and then he watched an episode of Blippi and no <laughs> who was um, picking sugar snaps and I said see that's how big they're supposed to get so now he's leaving them so we're actually <laughs> going to get some harvesting so he comes out and he checks them every day it's like is this one ready but we really want them to be a little bit fatter so they're nice and sweet so this bed here is the bed that we planted out in April um, we've got some purple potted peas along the back um, there and we've got all sorts of goodies in here we do have the peanut that is still growing from november last year so it hasn't died back yet um, it's the first time i've really had any success of getting it growing well um, so we'll see what it's doing um, so we've got some cauliflower up here obviously our lettuce um, kohlrabi um, these things here are just the, these um fences us to stop my chickens but obviously it doesn't work they always take a nibble as they walk past but here's kohlrabi I don't know if you if you've not um grown it before it's a really good one it doesn't take up much space um and it's so versatile I actually hate turnips I hate the taste of them but I like these they're actually a German turnip turnip they're more of a mix between like for me I find they're a mix between um a radish and a cabbage um yeah it's a quite a unique flavor but they're so versatile you can grate them and eat them fresh or you can roast them or you can chuck them in curries and whatnot so they're a really cool one to grow there's two varieties that you can get a green one or a purple one the purple one the skin's a bit more spicy like a radish <clears throat> so in here we've got um our bok choys i'm letting um, a couple of these go to seed so i can collect those um in here we've got a heirloom variety of broccoli um so this is the chikir i think that's how you say it <laughs> um so we're just getting ahead now head on these now these ones are the best really for the side shoots so the head is quite small um, but it will give loads and loads of side shoots so this has actually been ransacked by um, all sorts of <laughs> pests at the moment um, I'm just sort of letting them go we do have an aphid situation in this bed um, 
and we had some caterpillars and we had lots of snails as well and since the rain has stopped the snails have sort of eased off um, but yeah that's our March planning we've got some also I missed in here we've got some um, Chinese cabbage as well um, yeah so it's going well we've we've harvested heaps of the pak, pak choys already and a lot of um, there's some watermelon radish in amongst there as well we've harvested those and we're getting all of the outer leaves of the lettuce I do have some carrots that I just sowed they're actually just coming up there so they're the little Paris market ones which are like little balls instead of um the big taproot so now this is our bed that we planted out in May um, this bed is actually a bit of a problem bed it's from soil that we bought um, from a landscape supplier and it is full-on clay so we've been dealing with that for uh, I think this is um, probably the fourth third or fourth season um, so things haven't really thrived in here but it is actually looking really good um, so We've got our mustard at the front, then we've got a row of radish, and then carrots, and then some rocket, beetroots, lettuce, um, and then we've got our brassicas here. So we've got um, some cauliflower and some more of the um, heirloom variety of broccoli. And up the back, we've got our um, giant yakuma snow peas. So also here is a fennel, and this one was actually planted back last year. And I did a chop and drop on it um, and all of these bulbs have re-sprouted from um, the original plant that was planted there so if you want one that's going to come back over and over again fennel is really good so it lasted through all of that rain especially in this bed which is really clay um, so yeah that's a good tip okay so this is the bed that we planted out in June so this month um, so a lot of things we've sort of um, have come over from what we had in here before which was the mustard um, the Swiss chard and the beetroot I harvested all my carrots um, and then I've just been popping in all sorts of things so we've got broccoli and we've got cauliflower again um, some more tatsoi there is a some carrots popping up here and some um, green feast peas so I'm looking forward to having those um, yeah and we're just been sort of filling spaces I've got some little baby lettuces popping up there so these, this has basically just been planted out, this bed. So over here I've got my hot compost bin going. It's not really a bin, it's a pile. Um, it's just starting to sort of drop temperature. We were sitting up at about 60, 60 degrees Celsius for about a week and a half. Um, I did add a little bit of um, blood meal that I found and then I realised why I wasn't using blood meal in my garden because the beagle tried to eat it all <laughs> so hence the barricade of things around it at the moment she just got in here and started digging up. So this is um, hot compost is mostly from our sugar cane that um, sprouted from a bale that we bought um, and I chucked it in the ground and it has just taken over so we just mulched the lot. Um, and chucked it in this pile added some more browns into it and it's done really well so far so we should have some hot compost in a while so here's the progress on my garlic which i'm not overly happy with it this year um, because we got all of that rain um, it seemed to yellow off a little bit and i think this soil might be a little bit too wet for it um, but the new foliage coming up is looking good um, so I'm just sort of um, feeding it with some actively aerated um, worm casting tea um, just to give it a bit of a boost. Um, these beds are pretty new, so yeah. So these beds out here are doing pretty well. Um, I've got radish, I've got tomatoes, I've got beans, so all of the things that you grow in summer. Yes, we're growing over winter. Then we've also got some um, cauliflower some lettuce some carrots up there so all sorts of things in there I have also done another row of peas on this side and I have to get to staking up these tomatoes because that one's being held up by a garden fork at the moment and that's a bit ridiculous so I'll need to get onto that soon um, but yeah we've got a couple of different varieties of beans here the, these are called a simba and up there I've got the the Cherokee wax so it's a yellow one this one's just a standard um, green bean now I'm not going to pull the net off this because I'm not feeling like it um, but a couple of weeks ago I did a video on our tomatoes 
um, and they were looking pretty bad after that last lot of rain, but they are coming back. So this is one of my San Marzano's. Um, it looks really healthy. Um, we did give it some worm casting, actively aerated tea, um, and it, it did give it the boost that it needed, I think. Um, this bed as well was getting a bit too acidic, so I needed some good bacteria in here just to, to put things back into balance. Um, so we've got this nasturtium that's just taking over the world, but it is such a pretty colour. It's, it's hard to pick up on this camera, but it's really yellow. A lot of the nasturtiums that we have that self-seed are just that horrible orange colour. So it's nice to have a different colour. But yeah, we've still got, I think, there's one, two, three, four, five, six um, tomato plants in here. The San Marzano's aren't doing as well, the ones right up the other end. Um, but they typically don't do as well as, um, sorry, the Amish paste up the other end aren't doing as well. Uh, they typically don't do as well as the San Marzano's in our climate. But um, we'll see. We'll see how we go, see how many, if we get much more. Um, but yeah, they're looking a lot better than what they were. No more spots. So, super funny story. Um, my four-year-old son was trying to scare me by jumping out at me and um, he was failing and <laughs> it wasn't working. He's like, mom, what scares you? I had to think, think about it for a second. It's like, I think rats, rodents scare me. Literally walked outside to check if there are any eggs um, in the chicken coop and eight of the devils jumped out of <laughs> out on me and I have never screamed so much in my life. I, I think you could have heard me in Sydney. It was that epic. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot of rodent problems um, this year. We've actually caught six of those rats that jumped out on me um, via just traditional traps. Um, I don't know the answer to controlling them um, in the garden. Uh, they they eat through nets, they climb things, they get into to tiny little positions. Um, the best advice I can give is to make sure um, your garden is fairly tidy and there's nowhere for them to live. Uh, we find they don't get into our compost bins and I'll do another video on um, rodent proof composting um, later. But um, we find that when we go away, we put out our chicken feed um, in one of those auto dispensers and that's when we usually find that we get lots of rats around the garden. Um, I think it, it's worth noting that a lot of people blame possums um, for what rats do. Um, usually possums will stick to fence lines as in fence lines in suburban areas. They will only come down to the ground if they feel it's really safe. So if their their nest is probably like in a tree nearby um, and they, you know, have spent a lot of time looking down, um, that's the only time that they'll hit the ground and if it's if there's something really enticing. So we find that we can't grow anything that they love along the fence lines. Um, things that we've found are safe are um, the blue butterfly peas if we're doing sort of climbing things and the Madagascan beans, um, they don't seem to touch those. They do however love um, snake beans so they trimmed all those for us this year. Um, the other one that they haven't touched yet is the Malabar spinach. So yeah, just be mindful of um, blaming possums for things that rats do because usually they are the most destructive in the garden. Okay, the aquaponics. Um, so. Here's where we got the most rodent damage. Um, I actually had this full of cauliflowers and broccoli and I lost the lot, um, which was devastating. I haven't replanted, I haven't been brave enough yet because I still think there's two rats around. Um, this little lettuce was probably the last one to get really smashed. It's only just re-sprouting. Um, actually, there is, there's one cauliflower that still remains. Um, so what they were doing were they just they were coming and they were just eating the heart out of things and my the broccoli were actually quite big they were almost ready to start flowering um, so it was quite devastating but <clears throat> things are going okay in here we've got lettuce we've got some dill and spring onions um, lots of celery so I had lots of celery sprout up this year this was all from the same seed sowing um, but you can tell the difference between um, planting out um, like these ones we pulled out pretty much straight away and then these ones were still in a little cell and I've just thinned them out. Um, they're probably, that's probably about a month after thinning out now. But yeah, it goes to show how different things can grow if they've got all of the nutrients they, they need. So 
yeah but we're gonna have a lot of celery and luckily it does really really well in the aquaponics um, we've got a few other things here um, the mushroom plant which I think I showed you guys last time last tour um, and the chilies are overwintering they always go for us year round so these are just a, a regular cayenne I haven't been brave enough to put too much in here because of the rat situation but um, hopefully um, I'll get over that soon <laughs> I have popped some fennel in because not much touches the fennel um, and yeah we'll just we'll just see how we go <laughs> get brave one of these days and yeah just fully plan it out because it's kind of it's a bit of a waste of space at the moment so I don't talk too much about the fish from the aquaponics because it's kind of my husband's domain but at the moment we've got um, 25 barramundi in here there is a heater um, because they don't eat once it gets to a certain temperature and obviously if they don't eat they're gonna die um, so jade perch is one that will grow all year without a heater but my husband really wants the barramundi they do taste better um, they do get eaten um, and they grow really quick as well so we bought them um, just after the last lot of rain so in February we got that new batch um, we did lose a lot um, over that period when there was lots of rain. Um, the rainfall is really acidic and it can um, affect the, the water um, and aeration and all sorts of things. We're still trying to refine um, this setup, um, but Nathan always complains he never has any time. <laughs> but yeah, at the moment there's 25 in there um, and we'll split them up into the two tanks. So they're all in that tank, there's nothing in there. And then in the sump we'll probably so this is where all of the water flows from the the siphons so these get to a certain level and then they dump the water into this sump and then that's pumped up into those tanks um, so in here we usually have crayfish but they all escaped with all of the rain because it, it overflowed um, so we need to go get some more crayfish as well and that helps with keeping the system really nice and clean so this perennial bed we chopped back the Madagascar bean that was growing all across there um, it was just looking a little bit yellow and it is reshooting so that's um, pretty good so again this is one that the possums don't touch they will scale this fence all the way along here um, towards the chicken coop where we've got passion fruit and give that a trim but they don't touch the Madagascar bean so we've also got our um, asparagus this is only second year year in um, I did put about six crowns in but only two survived all of that rain we've got some um, different perennial spinaches um, a salvia which I'm not sure what name is some more asparagus so this one isn't doing as well um, but this salvia was taking over and there was no light so we gave it a big cut back um, the chickens are loving the Brazilian spinach um, so it's another perennial um, <laughs> it doesn't it normally looks bigger than this but the chickens are really keeping it well pruned um, and we've got some society garlic flowering here and another Madagascan bean going up there so our rainbow pot is now home to a raspberry this is um, it's called a heritage variety so it grows in our warm climate um, so we've got some fruit on it this is only I think we bought it in spring maybe um, yeah so it's not that old um, I just topped it up I had some I repotted all the blueberries and I had some leftover azalea mix azalea and rose mix and I just popped it in the top and it's just gone mental since doing that so I do need to get some mulch on here but um, yeah it's pretty happy and I also need to get a cage on it so it stops hanging over um, it is quite spiky and yeah it'll get in the way it'll probably get hit by a whippersnipper if it's not too careful okay and in our little seed raising station I've got some soil blocks here with some lettuce I've um, got another run of tomatoes going um, I've got some lettuce that I need to sort of sort out lots more for next month basically will be the last time that we get to plant um, these cool season crops um, these are little soil blockers that I was trying out I don't love them um, they're too small so I will stick to these soil blocks if you want to um, want me to do a video on soil blocking um, we've just moved to that because a lot of these little pots um, they're starting to degrade so and it's been so long since I bought a punnet of seedlings because we do all our own um, now 
they're they're just falling apart and I'm too lazy to do the the eco pop maker with the um the paper the newspaper we don't get newspapers so there's no point so the soil blocker is the, it uses the same um potting mix that we normally do anyway to make them so it's working out really well just the little ones are a bit too small I think they're called the micro and these ones are the mini um, we've got some basil and some more kale some more lettuce and I'm going again with onions it is a bit late in the season um, we lost all of us to the rats um, I think I've got two left um, so I'm gonna go again and see how they go I know we've got predicted um, lots and lots of rain coming up but um, that's just our sort of seed saving seed raising at the moment um, so this is what I used to call the dead zone um, dead no more um, so this is the view from the sand pit so we've got bananas happening um, no fruit at the moment we've already had one um, the pawpaws been on the edge of its life multiple times and it has come back. Um, we harvested some coffee beans not that long ago. Um, I tell you what, if you into them, they're a lot of hard work um, to get one cup of coffee, but it's such a pretty, pretty plant. So it's that one there. Um, in here, what we're going to do, we used to have the bean teepee in here and the kids didn't really play in it. There was too many spiders that too too precious about those things so we're probably going to put another fruit tree in there and get rid of that grass and just make it one big um line there um because our biggest thing um like we don't buy much produce um because we grow a lot of it but we do buy a lot of fruit so we need to get more fruit trees in here for to keep up with the needs of these kids um so yeah we've still got some pioneer plants so we've still got our pigeon peas um we actually leave those in because of the king parrots come in and eat those um they look a bit straggly and messy at the moment so we will eventually um get rid of them um but i think i'll always have one or two on the go just for those parrots because they're so pretty to watch thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed please give us a like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time mm -hmm.